Welcome back to Bill Kerman's voyage to Duna and we have our happy little lander here it's looking all good we're 31 days into the mission and it is time for the mid-course adjustment uh, it's normally a mid-course plane change but this is hardly going to be a plane change uh, as you can see the descending node is very close to the actual encounter point in which case uh, we're pretty much optimized as far as that's concerned let's just get it in there yeah hardly any well, it's tough to see sometimes what the their resulting periapsis is two million now we don't have one okay uh, after you do the pink ones for the plane change you do the blue ones and let's see which one gets us any better. That one looks better. It's tough to see though. One million meters and then nine hundred, five hundred, uh, three eighty-eight. Three hundred to fifty. Okay, I think uh, two forty is about as good as we're going to get. So that's practically uh, orbital distance from from Duna. But of course, we're going to need to aero break at Duna. So, but anyway, it's a trivial amount uh, to get from. Uh, what we are now about uh, 9,000 kilometers down to only 238 kilometers within Duna is only a matter of 18.9 meters per second so let's just aim and this is close enough let's point a little bit more precisely and burn see what's happening Oh, how close can we get it? Mm. Like I said, because the plane change was so close already, we are actually going to be able to dip into Duna's atmosphere and get within aero breaking distance from out here. We are now at the proper aero breaking distance. Now, of course, once we get within Duna's sphere of influence, it will totally change that. Um, I don't think it's going to let me keep this. But all right, let's let's go over there and and see whether. We really are in in Duna's atmosphere, ready to ready to aero break. Electric charge is good. Fuel is excellent. In fact, uh, pre probably won't don't even need to aero break. We could probably just decelerate. Okay, so here we are, and actually it did the opposite. We we don't have any periapsis at all. Um, so it took away our periapsis and has us crashing into Duna. That is not a good thing. So let's fix that. There's a periapsis. Now, here's another question. Should I go for Duna or should I go for I? I have landed on Duna before. I have. N I don't think I've ever landed on Ike. I don't. I've flown flown by Ike. I think that's what's confusing me a bit. But I don't think I've landed on Ike. But I, I guess I'll aero break at Duna just to, uh, just to make sure that we make use of its atmosphere, and then I'll decide what I do with Ike afterwards. Oh. Why can't I put the this maneuver closer to me? Anyway, I think 12 kilometers. I don't want to be forced into a landing on Duna, so I don't want to get too deep into the atmosphere. If we need to slow down after the aero break, that's fine. We've got the rocket to do it. Okay, that looks fine. Only 5.8 meter per second burn. Trivial, because of course we were crashing into Duna, so... 
But of course, if you try to uh, save yourself from this particular crash and get into a uh, 10 kilometer altitude closer, it will cost you much more than 5.8 meters per second. Alright, I'll take that. Now, there is another question in that I don't remember whether I'm at the right altitude for Ferrum Aerospace or whether, because Ferrum Aerospace um, is a mod that adjusts the aerodynamics of Kerbal Space Program. I, that means that you enter at a different height for aero braking, but well, I guess maybe, maybe not, depending. But uh, potentially, I'm looking at the wrong altitude for stock. I'm not sure. Bad memory for these things. I really should write more of it down. Well, I guess the, it's, it's the old situation where the more critical thing is making sure we don't crash into Duna. So I've got point prograde. Obviously this would not be a thing to do if there was uh, re-entry heat, but we don't have re-entry heat, so. Okay, here we go. Here's Duna. Bill, uh, actually, why don't you do a goo experiment? Okay, 70 science. Bill, why don't you EVA? Give me an EVA report. In space high over Duna. Very nice. We'll get another one low. Hmm, strange lighting effects. Zoom out. Uh, can we get temperature? Probably not. Let's just check though. Oh no, wrong one. Come on. Oh, we got temperature. Okay, in space near Duna now, so, uh, well, 56 science. I didn't expect that. So we're in space near Duna now. Bill, could you get that reading too? Okay, 56 science from that board. If all this science, I'm almost hesitant to even risk a landing. It might not be necessary. We should try, though. Okay, here we go, going in like a bullet. Okay, we're now in Duna's atmosphere. Crew report? Oh, it says in space near Duna, but I'll take it. The planet is very red, appears to have deep brown furrows across the surface. There does appear to be some kind of ice at both poles, though. We'll keep it for now, though, uh... Though, yeah, I think... Reaction wheel's not enough electric... Why does it say not enough electric charge? We've got plenty of electric charge. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll keep the crew report for now. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get anything better later. We still got a goo container and this uh, materials bay to go. Our orbit is finally slowing down. We might be too high in Duna after all. Anyway, but here we are. Dark side though, not easy to see. You know, if I extend the ladder, well, I, I don't know if it's a good idea in the atmosphere or not, but they have lights, so it'd, be, it'd make the vehicle at least a little bit more visible. All right, so how are we doing? Orbit is turning. We might get it into orbit, actually, without uh, having to burn. Ooh, there's the acting counter, but we're gonna lose that. There's orbit. 
Whoa. But that's all Ike doing weird stuff. Alright. We are going up. We might actually have to burn forward just to increase our apoapsis. We'll see. Well, if we're going to go for Ike, I think we will have to. This looks like a very good, very good height in order to uh, get captured by Duna. I actually am a little bit depressed because we've got so much fuel. Um, we really don't have any way to use it if we're going to land on something. I should have added docking ports to this so that the uh, well then we'd have to add docking ports to that so that it could dock with this in order to retrieve the fuel. But anyway, that's all complicated stuff. Bill Kerman is happy, and that's what's important. Actually, yeah, I think I'm going to have to burn forward a bit just to make sure we don't crash into Duna. I think I will try for Ike, since I haven't been there. Oh, now you're not going to give me an Ike encounter? It's like all the time I get Ike encounters. It's the right plane? Oh, I, I think I shouldn't be doing this while burning. Okay, well, let's just shut off the rocket and try it now. Am I going in the wrong direction from Ike? I'm, I think I might be. I think I'm going in the opposite direction from Ike. Well, it doesn't look like there'll be too much of a problem trying to get a transfer, though. But once I get there, it's going to be a heavy burn in order to get into orbit around it. That's not a problem, though. Like I said, we have plenty of fuel. Such wacky orbits. Well, let's do that one. I can't resist. Actually, let me let me uh, take a break and check what Ike's gravity is, because I actually haven't checked that yet, and to make sure that I understand what might be involved in making a landing there. So hold on a sec. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and it looks like Ike has a gravity of 0.112, which is even less than the moon. So, I mean, it shouldn't be any problem whatsoever. The only trick is, I also read on the wiki that Ike has really serious slopes. And since I have a bad tendency to tip over with my little lander, that might be tricky. And also, uh, when I see a slope, I tend to hover about trying to find a better landing spot and that would also be a bad idea since since I would waste fuel. But and of course uh, while we have plenty of fuel on the Duna transfer stage which I'm using right now we don't necessarily have a lot of fuel on the lander stage and not if we want to get back to Kerbin. But we'll try it anyway. We're here, so why not? I want to get into orbit around Ike and take a very close look at it before making any definite landing decisions. Oh, I passed my... What am I doing? Talking too much. 
Uh, I think I can just burn right now anyway. Ike is rather large. I mean, well, has a significant sphere of influence compared to its orbit, let's put it that way. And there's that sphere of influence. Ooh, wow, that would be a great... Anyway, but let's not go there. That would be a great flyby uh, trajectory if we wanted to just fly by Ike and uh, return back to Duna. But we don't need that right now. Alright, I think I can deal with this. Uh, we'll have to do a lot of slowing down around Ike, like I said, but it should be fine. Alright, see you in Ike's Sphere of Influence. So here we are, and let's see how much I need to do to get into orbit around it. Ah, 220... Uh, I mean, less than I would need around the moon, even if we're coming in in a weird way. Actually, the weird way might actually help, but... Uh, let's say around here, actually. Tweak the orbit so it's a bit higher on the periapsis side. All right, that looks like a fine orbit. Try not to pass the maneuver node this time, and also we'll have to look into making a landing on the brighter side of Ike. Where is Ike? There it is. Very rocky, look at that. Just from its silhouette you can see. Oh, there's the sun. Should be able to shed some light on this situation. Alright, let's see what the bright side of Ike looks like. Shall we do a good experiment here? Hmm. Let's see. That one's done. Goo feels right at home here. Standard thing. 70. Alright, let's just keep it. Bill EVA. Uh, in space near Ike, worth 56. Let's keep that. Board. Plenty of stuff we're not doing, obviously we're not able to do another crew report, right? So, in a second mission to the Duna system, if you can call it that, we will have plenty to do. Okay, so let's see, it's not that bad. I mean, this whole spot would have been fine for a landing. Oh, Duna, rise. Yeah, I think I think I can make a landing on this. No problem. All right, so let's prepare that. So again, opposite side from the bright side because we want to land on the. Oh, that's a weird place. Well, th there's no biomes, so I don't expect that to be there to be any benefit in landing in an interesting location. We need biomes. We need biomes. Um, so I think we saw that. Oh no 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 no! I'm trying to uh, aim for that spot that I said was looked good, so. doesn't seem to want me to. I guess it's the eccentricity of my orbit. And the fact that I have to pass this mountain, this bulge right here is pretty high. So if I try and dip down before that bulge, I can't. Um, yeah. See, it's really skimming the surface at this point. So I guess I'll have to just uh, slow down on the fly once I pass, once I get into the bright uh, the sunlit side. 
I'm sure there's a technical term for that, but... Okay, here we are. Let's just uh, do it in this view. I think I can extend my landing gear without it bumping into anything, so I'll do that. Ooh, looking at that, it doesn't look like it's... I thought I had seen that it would extend below the the rocket, but the suspension might knock the rocket. Oh, that's another worry now. Bill, you must not get stranded on Ike. It would be very, very embarrassing. Okay, we are retrograde. I'd want to point a little bit this way. And let's slow down. Huh. This area looks best. But actually, I don't really want to pass this... Yeah, this, this bulge worries me, so let me just... Let's say, go a little bit northish and get ahead of that bulge somewhere around here we find okay I think we'll be safe like that we'll keep the Duna Transit stage in order to finish up our horizontal velocity And then we'll only have to use the the lander stage for the actual landing. Uh, why don't we get a read on what the al uh, altitude is? Uh, IVA. We're not below three thousand meters yet on the on the surface altitude. I'm not taking any chances. I want to dump this Duna Transit stage now. So let's milk it for what we can get out of it. And that's the end of that. Alright, now we are definitely lander stage. Let's see. Struts barely extend further. Um, maybe I should lock suspension on them. hope that doesn't hurt anything but better not to uh, it could make me bounce I guess I'll have to land it gently let's see IVA still above 3000 you can see the radar altitude isn't uh, budging very much so we're still above 3000 meters let's get this a test burst wow oh, this is a fairly low spot on uh, Ike still not below 3000 meters oh now we are okay let's start taking things seriously here I seem to have misjudged the altitude of this portion it's a lot lower than I thought it would be Okay, very gentle landing, though perhaps a costly one. Let's extend some ladders. I guess we'll do the science tuner here. We'll keep the goo containers as is. One of the samples has reacted very strangely to the surface of Ike. 200 points. 
Okay, keeping data. EVA bill. Let's do that thing that Kerbals do. Or those things that Kerbals do, now that we can do more than one thing on the surface of uh, New World. And in fact, this is only the second time I've landed a Kerbal on the surface of something other than Kerbin. Uh, since we've only planted a flag on the moon. Take the surface sample. The dark black soil has an almost crystalline structure. It's fun to play with. 240 science. Keep that. EVA report. You look up the sky and see something zip zip past. Okay. 64 science. Uh, definitely make note of that. And plant a flag, would you please, Bill? Whoop. <laughs> Backward Kerbal flag. All right. Uh, so, Bill... Herman on Ike and the date. We are in 2014 now. All right. First interplanetary trip. Okay. Nothing too clever, but good enough. Let's get back in there. That's not what I wanted to do. Somewhere around here. Jump, up, jump, jump, get up, get up there, get up there. All right, there you go. Board. All right, we're all good to go. So let's retract the ladders. Well, here we go. Returning uh, Bill Kerman back to back to Kerman after his excursion on Ike. Uh, let's just lift off and get into orbit around Ike, shall we? Uh, everything looks like a go. We've done... Oh, uh, a temperature experiment. We haven't done a temperature experiment here. Uh, this one here. Log temperature. Yep. Ike surface, 64 points. Keep that data. Alright, now we're good to go. Now, Ike is a bit rocky, so we do have to gain some altitude. There we go. Okay. Let's time warp to the apoapsis. And complete this. Now, we're going to have to wait a while in orbit around Ike in order to get a transfer back to do uh, back to Kerbin so now we're in orbit Bill Kerbin looks all good actually what I could do is switch to the flag and then do the time warp and I think I'll do that yeah so everything uh, good here yep I think so so let me go to the map view click the flag and switch to it Okay, so here we are with our focus on the flag on the surface of Ike, and what we need is for Duna to be at a 75 degree angle behind Kerbin. Right now, Kerbin is ahead of us by roughly 45 degrees. So uh, what's actually going to happen is Kerbin is faster, so it has to actually lap us uh, in order for us to be behind. So it's going to take a little while. Fortunately, our Kerbals don't need oxygen, so Bill will be fine around around Ike and since uh, Duna's uh, gravity isn't affecting anything it's just Ike itself so so Bill will be fine around Ike as we time warp here alright it's gonna take uh, take a while probably around I don't know probably more than a hundred days I think wait a minute wait a minute am I thinking about this wrong Yeah, yeah, Kerbin is supposed to be... It, it doesn't have to lap us. It doesn't have to lap us. Right, right. It just has to be behind us. It has to be over here. Okay. So yes, Kerbin does not have to lap us. Right. 
Okay, I think uh, maybe a little bit more. No, uh, that, that's that's about 75 degrees, isn't it? Uh, protractor time. So yes, literally putting the protractor up to the screen. And oh, it could do with a little bit more. This is about 80. Okay, 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 okay. I think I'll call that 75. All right, so, so yes, now we switch back to uh, to Bill Kerman in orbit around Ike, and indeed it is time to bring Bill Kerman back home after an entirely successful mission around out to the Duna sphere of influence. Now the same deal as always we need to exit in the same direction as the orbit oh, oh wait 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 I'm doing this wrong it actually should be opposite you know what I'm, I'm gonna do the thing where I'm going to exit out to Duna's sphere of influence and then and then burn out that way we can uh, take advantage of doing it a little bit. How much is this gonna cost me? Shouldn't cost me as much as all that. Let's see. Okay, I think that'll do. Very nice. Let's let's get out to dinner orbit now. And then we'll make our transfer to to Kerbin. Oh right. So hopefully we can burn out around here. And that would be a good way to go. Let's see. Uh it's a little bit this way. Uh, I think we can get closer to the periapsis. That's, that'll be good. Set Kerbinus target. Ah, I think we can burn right at the periapsis. That's excellent. I like that. Aha! Let's just tweak it a little bit. All right, uh, 18, 18,000 kilometers seems fine by me. That'll be more than close enough. And only 600 meters per second. Very nice. Perhaps some of that is the benefit of burning at Duna's periaps uh, at the periapsis close to Duna. All right, so let's get into Duna. It'll be interesting to see how much Delta V I have left in this vehicle and if that would have been enough to lift off of Duna. If so, then then really we, we could do a Duna landing safely. Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. Uh... Again, this uh, interesting method of burning where we're pointing at the planet. Let me make sure that our periapsis isn't going horribly wrong here. Oh, it is, it is, it is, it is. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Duna Periapsis 13 is not a good idea. Let me, let me delay this particular burn. Let's say we want to... Oh no, this is not good. Alright, let's get rid of this one, in fact. As cute as that burn might have been, let's just uh, burn from here. Oh, that would probably be too much. The reason it dipped down is because of the radial part. You see when I'm tugging the blue ones, that that has the tendency to bring you into the planet sometimes. Okay, well there's our encounter again. Let's see if it's doing the same thing though. It is. Let's see if I can move it out a little bit. Okay. All right, this this looks like it'll be good. Yeah, I mean, uh, 54 kilometers is fine. 
we're gonna be passing the the atmosphere. Okay, once more with feeling. Okay, let's be more precise about things now. Okay, that's about as close as we're going to get. And 4,000 kilometers is very close. When we are talking about uh, still trans uh, still around Duna, getting that close to Kerbin means that we're probably going to be able to do the same thing that we did on the mid-course burn to Duna, which is uh, adjust into Kerbin's atmosphere for the aerobrake. This is sort of an ideal situation, though. So I'm a bit worried about taking a look at how much fuel I have left and judging whether I would be able to make a Duna landing based on that. Since uh, we're pretty much hitting everything perfectly right now. Yeah, so I'm a little bit worried about that. Maybe not the best mission to judge things based on. Okay, bye bye Duna, bye bye Ike. All right, uh, well, see you at the mid-course burn point where we'll see how close we can get to to Kerbin. Okay, we're roughly at the right spot, but uh, as so often happens, I can't click the orbit to create a maneuver node. Um, yeah, it'll let me click the orbit after I get past Kerbin, but it won't let me click this light blue orbit before I get to Kerbin. So I'm going to have to just do a little bit of test burning in order to figure out which way to do. So pointing south. Pointing south is good. Let me just finish that bit up. Okay, well that's as good as it gets there. Point radially up. Point radially up is good. Okay, that's as good as that gets. Point prograde. Point prograde is bad. Point retrograde. Whoa, stop spinning. Point retrograde is good, but not that good. Huh. Let's see. Tweaking. And that's that's a good good arrow breaking height. I'll just get a little bit lower. Oh, that's a little bit too low. You know what though? Uh, it's not gonna give me that. I'm gonna end up at a different height once we approach Kerbin, just like we did in Duna. Now I might be crashing into the surface when I approach Kerbin, but anyway, we'll we'll fix that as we go in. So let me uh, continue our journey into Kerbin's sphere of influence, and I'll see you once we're ready to make our final approach into Kerbin. Up as expected, we're coming in not only uh, into the surface, but also at a curious angle. And uh, once again, it doesn't want to let me make a maneuver node. Let's see. There we go. Let's see, correct this weird inclination part first. And as you can see, just correcting the inclination already helps to give me a periapsis. But I actually don't want it that high. Okay, well I'll be a little bit more fine-tuned about it as I make the burn. It's only a 33.7 meter per second burn, which is beautiful. At, uh, really, this is a this has been a beautiful mission so far. Honestly, this mission to uh, Ike 
Landing on Ike and returning. Where is Kerbin? Hello, Kerbin. Oh, there's Kerbin. We're way far out right now. Anyway, beautiful mission so far. Uh, perfect in so many respects. Uh, including the fact that our mid-course burns have been getting us uh, right into the planet. So... Okay, I think that'll be fine. Alright, so how much Delta V do we have left on this thing? Uh, we have about a third of the fuel. Uh, so uh, just being conservative about it, we'll say a third of the Delta V. It's actually more than that because uh, there's less mass for this one third of fuel to lift. But uh, if we talk about one third of this Delta V, we're talking about about th a thousand meters per second. So this is... I think this should be able to land on Duna and then uh, return. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't. But again, it was a rather perfect mission, so... Well, let's not say anything until I get it down on to uh, Kerbin's surface and recover it. I don't want to jinx it too much here. Okay, let's watch the approach. There's... Whoa... There's the moon, and there's Kerbin. Okay, we don't have to dump the the lander portion just yet. Normally we would uh, because because of re-entry and all that, but but it might be beneficial to keep it with us to make sure that we do slow down. Actually, I should just let let me just uh, facilitate this a bit. Let's let's get into let's just burn what fuel we have to make sure that we are going to come down, and uh, not just rely on the aero brake. Since we have the fuel, there's no reason not to. Okay, that will uh, that will ensure that we come down, but we'll still hang on to it. No reason not to. Like I said. Okay, well, here we are, and really, uh, I think it is about time to decouple. Hopefully I don't hit any mountains though. That's one thing I fail to consider. Uh, could be bad. <laughs> could be bad. I forgot to think about that. Come on. Uh, dropping around here would be would be best. Dropping around this uh, coastal range would be okay. Looks looks like we're going to be good. All right. Uh, unfortunately, on the dark side a bit. Uh, we gotta get past these mountains here. Ooh, could be a close call. No, I don't think we are. Well, on the positive side, it'll be bright enough to see what's going on. On the downside, we could hit a very bad slope. Oh, this could be unfortunate. I think we got to hit the worst of it, actually. Uh, these slopes here, or something like that. Uh, yeah, oh, shoot. Come on, drag. Um, not there, not there, not there. Oh, crud. Oh. 
Well, if you survive this, Bill, you might want to take a walk around and get sort of a biome thing going. Just to boost the record, but wow. It's a big if, the whole survival point here. I don't like the look of that shadow. Oh, this is the worst. I should have been a little bit more careful about uh, about my slowing down with the tuna portion. This is still a very steep, steep slope here. I don't think I don't know. Bill looks happy, but I don't think he's very intelligent actually. No, well, maybe he is. Maybe he's got a better view of things than I do. Uh, I've seen the inside of that cockpit, though, and I don't think so, but that looks not too bad, actually. Actually, I think he might be very, very lucky. What just... Whoa. Something just very weird just happened right there. Uh... Okay. Well, anyway, uh, let's let's just focus on the positive. Should I get Bill out to? Well, I think if I try and get him out, he's gonna be like, "Wow, I don't know." No, I mean the, the biome isn't worth it. Let's just recover the vessel and get this uh, get this thing serious, play it seriously, and make sure that we don't mess around. All right. Well, that's something. A thousand forty-seven science earned on the mission to Ike. That is something. Crew report, EVA reports. Not as many EVA reports as we could have done. We could have done high over Ike, for instance. We also didn't do a mid-space one uh, in orbit around the sun. Um, on spite, in, uh, so yeah, uh, surface sample, obviously. EVA report from the surface. Temperature from the surface. Uh, while in space near Duna and also in the upper atmosphere. So we could have done, I don't know if there's a high over Duna. But we could have done another temperature scan uh, near Ike, I guess. Material study? We could have done a ton more material studies. So there's plenty of science left around Duna. So we could send another mission there in the near term, though. I'll take a look at where the planets are in terms of transfer windows and use that to decide where to go next. Certainly, we are going to continue doing interplanetary missions uh, for the foreseeable future. All right. So, uh, and of course, recovery from a recovery of a vessel from the surface of Ike, a whopping 75 science, for a total of 1,130 uh, in our bank right now, our science bank, if you will. So, uh, tune in next time to see how I spend all these wonderful science points and uh, figure out which mission I will do next. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please do press like, and if you want to continue watching my wonderful missions in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.